Okay, welcome back. We are uh, going to the second part of our cardiac worksheet, and this is the cardiovascular system uh, talking about cardiac cycle. Uh, I put up the diagram next to our questions so we can use this uh, to answer some of these questions that we have here in front of us. So starting with the uh, ECG and um, tying that into uh, cardiac cycle. So it's asking which wave of the electrocardiogram precedes. Precedes meaning it's happening beforehand, right? Um, and so it precedes isovolumetric relaxation. So if you look down here at the ECG, so this is ECG down here, you have the P wave, you have the QRS complex, and then you have the T wave. Now the P wave is for atrial contraction. The QRS complex is for atrial relaxation as well as ventricular contraction. And the T wave is for ventricular relaxation. And so it's asking which one precedes comes before isovolumetric uh, relaxation. So if we look up here on the diagrams, um, you can see that right here is this period of isovolumetric uh, relaxation. All these valves are closed and the um, semilunar valves are closed and the AV valves are still closed. And so it's this period right here that we're talking about where all the valves are closed. So there's no volume change in the ventricle. So that's isovolumetric and the heart's relaxing. Here's the T wave. And so it's asking which wave precedes, comes before, and as you can see, if we follow this down, the T wave precedes isovolumetric relaxation. Uh, another thing to note is this also lines up with end systolic volume, right? So end systolic volume is really the volume that is left in the ventricle uh, after all uh, after the semilunar valves close and the AV valves have not opened up again. So it's, it's the remaining volume. And you can also say that uh, end systolic volume is happening during this same time as isovolumetric relaxation. Next question is during which phase is there a decrease, a decrease in the volume of the ventricles? Well, that's going to be during uh, ventricular ejection, right? So the ventricles are ejecting blood and it's gonna be this period right here. I should probably do it in a different color. So it's this period here and that is really equivalent to stroke volume, right? Because that is the volume of blood being ejected. So ventricular ejection is going to ultimately equal stroke volume. Next question coming down is during which phase of the cardiac cycle is pressure in the left ventricle higher than pressure in the aorta? And so looking at this, again, it's going to be this same phase right here, right? Because you can see ventricular pressure is the green line and aortic pressure is the blue line, right? So that's aortic and that's ventricular and it's higher only in this period of ventricular ejection. So the answer again is going to be ventricular ejection. Uh, number four, the phase of the cardiac cycle where ventricles are in systole, another word for contraction, but there's no change in ventricular volume. So it's going to be isovolumetric because that is no change. 
And so is it going to be isovolumetric contraction or relaxation? Well, the ventricles are in systole, so we already know it's going to be contraction. Okay, number five, closure of the atrial ventricular valves or AV valves. Okay, AV valves marks the beginning of which phase? So uh, the AV valves close here. Let's do it in another color, right here. And so that's going to be the beginning of this phase right here, which is this one. And that is isovolumetric relaxation. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, isovolumetric contraction. What made me think of that? But. So the AV valves close. Right as the QRS complex uh, depolarizes the ventricular wall and the heart muscle starts to contract, but the semilunar valves have not opened yet. And so it is isovolumetric contraction. Uh, six, the name when the atrial ventricular valves and semilunar valves are closed during ventricular diastole. And again, diastole is another name for relaxation. And if all of the valves are closed, it's going to be an isovolumetric period right, because all the valves are closed, so no volume is changing in the ventricles, and it's during diastole, and another name for that is relaxation. And finally, what pressure condition must be met for the mitral valves to open? And so for the mitral valves to open, uh, the atrial pressure has to be greater than ventricular pressure because mitral valve is actually also called the left AV valve, right? And so how are the AV valves going to open? Well, if we run here, um, I'm gonna clean some of this up so we can see this chart again. So looking at the valves. Uh, this is ventricular pressure. Oops, I didn't spell that correctly, so I don't want to leave you with that. And this purple line here is atrial pressure. And so at what point will the AV valves open? Well, it's gonna be the point in which uh, ventricular pressure, and I'll blow it up here. It's gonna be this point right here where ventricular pressure drops below. So this is ventricular pressure and it drops below atrial pressure, right? So ventricular pressure down here goes below atrial pressure. And so we end up with uh, ventricular pressure is less than atrial pressure. And that will then open the AV valves. Both the tricuspid and mitral valve are both the right and left uh, AV valves. And so finally, number eight is what pressure condition must be met for the aortic valve to close? So aortic valve to close. The aortic valve is uh, the valve, the semilunar valve, uh, between the left ventricle and the aorta. So that is going to be, uh, it's going to open here when ventricular pressure exceeds aortic pressure, that's aortic pressure. And this is ventricular. 
I'm having a hard time spelling ventricular. Let's try this again. And I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. I feel like it's a little too thick. Uh, so here we go. That, whoops, that didn't work out. No, did it. Try that again. So this is aortic. And the green is going to be ventricular. And so the point at which the aortic valve uh, is less than the ventricular valve, that's what causes it to open. And here, sorry about that. And what causes it to close is when aortic valve or the aortic pressure exceeds ventricular pressure. So to answer number eight, what pressure condition must be met for the aortic valve to close, it's going to be that aortic pressure must then be greater than ventricular pressure, which would be here. And so aortic pressure is greater than ventricular pressure. And that equals semilinear valves closing. And that completes this portion of the uh, worksheet.